Methylene blue. Amazing or potentially harming you? Let's talk about it in this video. I'm gonna break it all down for you guys. Methylene blue is all the rage today. It's all over X, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Everybody is showing their blue tongues. We see RFK Jr. on a plane squirting methylene blue into his water. But what's the real detailed analysis of this? Is it something you should be taking? Or is it better left for Easter eggs and uh, college dorm room pranks, which I will tell you about in this video. So let's dig into it, guys. So methylene blue was originally developed as a textiles dye, and you can see why. It's a beautiful blue color. It was discovered in 1876 by a gentleman named Heinrich Caro, and was originally synthesized from coal tar, so it's petroleum derived. Today it is synthesized from dimethylanilin, which is also a petroleum derivative. So if that matters to you, I think about that sometimes. Your methylene blue is a petroleum derivative. Now, what's the deal with this? Why are people taking it today? People are taking this and showing their blue tongues, saying that it makes them feel good, that it improves their energy, that it's giving them superhuman powers. But when you actually look at the research here, there are some major considerations and some big concerns to think about. So the first thing to consider here is what this molecule actually does in your body. It does a couple of things. One of the more important things that it does in your body is inhibit an enzyme called monoamine oxidase A, primarily, it's a very strong inhibitor of MAOA, which breaks down monoamine molecules like serotonin, and it also inhibits monoamine oxidase B, but to a lesser extent. So it's really important to understand that when you take methylene blue, you are affecting serotonin metabolism in your brain and in your body. By inhibiting MAOA in a significant way, you are increasing the amount of serotonin, a neurotransmitter, in the synaptic cleft between the neurons, because that's where it gets broken down by these monoamine oxidase enzymes. We'll come back to why that's so important later in this video, but for now, it's very important to understand this, because if you're taking anything already that is gonna increase your serotonin, you're at an increased risk of serotonin syndrome, something that is very unpleasant, and is characterized by heart palpitations, sweating, anxiety, and can lead to pretty major medical complications and potentially even death. If you're taking an SSRI antidepressant, an SNRI antidepressant, a TCA, a tricyclic antidepressant, if you're taking St. John's wort, rhodiola, 5-HTP, all of these compounds can increase serotonin in your body and they can interact with methylene blue. So you should not take methylene blue if you are taking any of those without very, very careful consideration. Now, the other really important thing that methylene blue does in your body is that it acts as a redox reactive compound, meaning it moves electrons around. We will see this when we're talking about the electron transport chain later in this video. This is where methylene blue may have potential benefits, but I also think where it is going wrong for most of you that are taking this. Before we get into that, I wanna talk a little bit about dosing and some of the other major side effects of methylene blue. In case you guys didn't know this, there's very good evidence that if you're taking large doses of methylene blue, it actually turns your brain blue and maybe even your heart blue. It also turns your pee blue, and there are somewhat humorous, not so humorous stories of college kids baking methylene blue into brownies playing jokes on their friends who then freak out when their pee turns blue out of the blue. Historically, methylene blue was added to psychiatric medications by psychiatrists to monitor patient compliance. Doctors could tell if patients were taking their medications because their pee would turn blue. And if their pee wasn't blue, they clearly weren't taking their antipsychotics. So if you take methylene blue, know that your pee will probably turn blue. And if you take methylene blue at high doses, four to five milligrams per kilogram, which is around three to 400 milligrams per day, chronically or intravenous use, you very well are turning your brain blue. That's something that kind of doesn't sit right with me. Um, you won't know this, of course, until your brain is autopsied, but there are very good examples and photos of blue brains from people who were treated with methylene blue. In the medical world, the main use of methylene blue right now is for methemoglobinemia. This condition occurs when the iron atom at the center of your hemoglobin molecule is oxidized from the Fe2 plus state to the Fe3 plus state. Iron in hemoglobin can be oxidized from the ferrous to the ferric state. When iron is in the Fe3 plus state, it has lost an electron. The loss of an electron causes iron to go from two plus to three plus. Loss of electrons is oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction. Methylene blue can rescue this. When iron is in that oxidized state, that Fe3 plus state within a hemoglobin molecule, it doesn't hold on to oxygen well. You may know that the way that oxygen moves around your body is by being associated with the iron atom at the center of your hemoglobin molecule 
when it is in the reduced state, when it is in the Fe2 plus state. When iron is oxidized to the ferric state, Fe3 plus, it doesn't hold on to oxygen well. People present with cyanosis, blue lips, blue mucous membranes. They are given methylene blue, and it helps to reduce the iron back to Fe2 plus. What causes this? It's usually caused by environmental toxicities. Drugs like dapsone or trimethoprim can cause it. Other nitrates can cause methemoglobinemia as a toxicity. So it's not a very common thing, but that is the main use of methylene blue. It's what I learned about in medical school. It's what most people know as the use of methylene blue. Methylene blue is used in some bacterial conditions. It's used to treat some medical conditions. It's used as a dye in medicine, sometimes historically. But today, the main use of methylene blue in medicine is as a treatment for methemoglobinemia because of its ability to move electrons around, because of its ability to reduce molecules. So methylene blue can hold on to an electron and move that electron in the body, which is why it interacts with our mitochondria. I think that overall, the majority of people who are using methylene blue today are using it improperly, and they are feeling the effects of methylene blue not from mitochondrial improvements. The idea that methylene blue improves the function of your mitochondria is really totally false. And I'm gonna tell you why in a moment. I think most people are feeling a little bit better, maybe a little bit brighter or a different psychological state because of the MAOA inhibition. So if you are a generally healthy human, if you don't have clear blocks in your mitochondrial electron transport chain, methylene blue actually is hurting you. It is decreasing the amount of ATP produced in your mitochondria by moving electrons further down the electron transport chain. So in order to understand this, we have to talk about the mitochondrial electron transport chain for just one moment. I'll try and make it as simple as possible. Mitochondria are little subcellular organelles, probably the result of bacterial incorporation into eukaryotic cells billions of years ago. They reside in almost every cell in your body. Red blood cells don't have mitochondria, but most other cells in your body do. This is where your energy gets produced. When you eat food, that food at a very high level is a source of electrons. Those electrons get into your cells in molecules like glucose or proteins or fats where they are broken down. The breakdown products of those macronutrients are then moved through your biochemistry. Some ATP, which is the main energy currency of the body, is produced before the electron transport chain in your mitochondria. But the majority of the energy, the majority of the ATP, the adenosine triphosphate that is used to run all of the cellular processes in your body comes from the mitochondrial electron transport chain. And in this chain, electrons, either from NADH or FADH2, are passed through the electron transport chain causing protons to move from the inner mitochondrial space to the intermembrane space of the mitochondria. Protons then move down their concentration gradient through a microscopic motor in the mitochondria known as an ATP motor. It actually spins and has uh, 40 times the torque of a diesel engine when you can account for the size of this little ATP motor. And as the protons move down the concentration gradient in that motor, they make ATP. ATP is the energy currency of your body. So the movement of electrons down the mitochondrial electron transport chain is what creates the proton gradient necessary for energy in your body. This is relevant to methylene blue because methylene blue is effective at bypassing blocks in that mitochondrial electron transport chain. Blocks at complex one, blocks potentially at complex two, three, or four. Now, what causes mitochondrial electron transport chain blocks? Generally, it's toxins. <laughs> now, some of us may not have proper functioning of our mitochondrial electron transport chains because we are metabolically unwell, but I think a lot of you guys who are taking methylene blue are pretty darn healthy, and your mitochondria work well. And it's important to understand that if your mitochondria work well, methylene blue is actually doing you no favors. It is moving electrons down the electron transport chain, creating less ATP than you would normally have. So as we've seen, the way that you make ATP in the mitochondria is by moving electrons down the electron transport chain. In the process, protons are pumped from the inner part of the mitochondria, the matrix, to the intermembrane space. The subsequent movement of those electrons down their concentration gradient through complex 5, which is also known as an ATP motor, is what generates ATP. 
Now, the electrons moving down the electron train creates the electrochemical potential that drives protons to the intermembrane space. And if you move the electrons down less of that chain, you move less protons into the intermembrane space and you have less protons creating ATP. So abbreviating the path of the electrons down the electron transport chain will cause less ATP to be produced. And that's what methylene blue does. It moves electrons further down the chain, which can bypass a block in the chain if you have a pathology, which very few people actually do, but some people do. That makes less ATP in the end because you, those electrons are traveling a shorter distance, moving less protons to the intermembrane space and resulting in less ATP as the protons move down their concentration gradient back into the matrix. And I fear that many of you are taking methylene blue, thinking that it's benefiting you because of the monoamine oxidase A inhibition, giving you psychological changes, which are not necessarily indicative of any better energy production. This is the most important part of this video, guys. I think most people who are taking methylene blue are decreasing the efficiency of ATP production, decreasing the amount of ATP produced in their body because you don't need to bypass those complexes in your mitochondrial electron transport chain. There are environmental toxins like rhodanone or things like metformin and berberine. These do block complex one. So all of you guys that think berberine is amazing, berberine is a partial toxin for complex one of the mitochondria. And I don't think it's a healthy thing for humans. This whole craze around metformin has really died off now as a longevity drug. All the people that were promoting it have kind of, have kind of snuck out the side door and never, never owned up to the fact that they were probably very wrong about metformin, but metformin, and its cousin, berberine, do inhibit complex one in the mitochondria. Are there situations where methylene blue may be helpful? Yes, potentially. Methylene blue has been studied in Alzheimer's, but the data have been very underwhelming. Maybe it's helpful for Parkinson's, but we don't have the full data yet. And remember guys, the benefits of methylene blue at an energy production level are a irreconcilable, unhealable, complex block in the electron transport chain. Very, very rare cases of genetic mutations could cause problems in the electron transport chain, but most of you guys listening to this don't have those things. What do I think the way forward is? What's the best path here? I think for most of us, methylene blue is a net negative and you should not be taking this. Don't take methylene blue unless you absolutely know that your mitochondrial electron transport chain is badly inhibited. I think most of you guys are taking it for the wrong reasons, you're being misled, and the idea being circulated, promulgated online that methylene blue somehow optimizes mitochondrial function is completely wrong. Methylene blue absolutely does not optimize mitochondrial function unless you have a block in the electron transport chain in your body. If your mitochondria are not functioning well, if you have metabolic dysfunction, methylene blue is not the answer. That's not the root cause. What should you be doing to fix this? Well, you need to make sure you're getting critical nutrients so that your mitochondrial electron transport chain works. NADH is derived from niacin. FADH2 is derived from riboflavin. Coenzyme Q10 is found in the electron transport chain and complexes of the electron transport chain need copper. So at a very high level, niacin, riboflavin, coenzyme Q10, and copper are essential for proper mitochondrial health. Where can we get those things? Oh, I don't know, meat, liver? <laughs> Easy solution, guys. If you are eating meat and you are eating liver and you are consuming animal foods, if you're eating egg yolks, if you are eating whole foods and generally not eating garbage processed foods for the majority of your diet, you're probably getting enough of those things. Coenzyme Q10, very rich in muscle, especially the heart muscle. This is a very strong argument to eat something like heart. If you don't wanna eat heart, consider something like heart and soil. We make lots of desiccated organ supplements that contain heart in the capsule. If you don't wanna eat liver, we also make those in capsules. I take whole package every single day Whole package has testicle because I'm a man and also has liver. Liver is a great source of riboflavin. It's a great source of coenzyme Q10. I would say eat the organs fresh. I eat fresh organs every day also. I eat liver and I eat heart almost every day. But if you truly wanna be healthy, but you don't wanna eat those things, check us out at Heart and Soil. We do make desiccated organs. Lineage is another company that I built because I wanted to make getting organs easy and we have air dried meat sticks that have liver and heart in them as well. So get your organs and get your meat and you will be healthy. The main thing that I think is breaking people's electron transport chains is metabolic dysfunction. And I do think that one of the main reasons this goes awry is because of excess seed oils. We know that excess reactive oxygen species, excess oxidative stress can shut down the electron transport chain. Again, methylene blue won't fix your seed oil toxicity. What will? Getting rid of seed oils from your diet. Seed oils are an oxidative liability, meaning that the more you stuff your body with seed oils, the more your whole body, every cell of your body, 
and all of the mitochondria have to work to protect yourself from the oxidative liability that those seed oils are. The linoleic acid in seed oils is much more prone to oxidation than monounsaturated fats or saturated fats. Yes, we all get small amounts of linoleic acid in our diet, even if we're eating animal-based, but tallow has one to 2% linoleic acid. We make an amazing tallow at Lineage, but things like soybean oil, corn oil, canola oil have 55, 45, or 25% linoleic acid respectively. So if you wanna stuff yourself full of fragile fats like linoleic acid, that make it hard on your mitochondria and your cells to keep things in an oxidative balance, and that can lead to oxidative stress, be, be my guest, eat a ton of seed oils. But if you wanna be healthy, avoid that stuff like the plague. The other thing that causes a major issue for humans in terms of oxidative stress and metabolic dysfunction is processed sugar, not fruit sugar. Fruit sugar doesn't lead to increased LPS, increased lipopolysaccharide in your body, but processed sugar does. This is the problem. I've tweeted about this on X in detail. I've talked about it in my other videos. So getting rid of processed sugar and getting rid of seed oils, this will improve the health of your mitochondria. Methylene blue does nothing to improve the health of your mitochondria long-term. And for those of you that are healthy, this does not improve your mitochondrial function. I repeat, this is probably harming most of you guys watching this video. You are decreasing the amount of ATP production in your body. And I think that you are being misled by the MAOA inhibition causing serotonergic changes in your brain, which may make you feel better, but you're actually not functioning as well at the mitochondrial level. So I wanna hear from you guys. Have you tried methylene blue? Do you have blue tongues and blue brains? Have you actually tried changing your diet? And how are you guys feeling? This is not something that I think is good for humans long-term in most situations. I think there's a lot of hype around methylene blue, but I actually think it's not great for most of you guys. So I hope this video is helpful. I wanted to break this down because I think so many are misrepresenting this stuff. I'm gonna go pour this down the sink I'm not drinking this. I'm gonna go eat a steak and some liver instead. See you guys later. And if you've made it this far and you enjoy this sort of technical breakdown, you enjoy this sort of analysis, I have a free Sunday newsletter. I'll put a link here and in the description. I wanna see you guys in there. I think you'll find a lot of value in this. I put a lot of work into that newsletter every Sunday. I think it's gonna add a lot of value to your life. I share tips and tricks and hacks in there. So I'll see you guys on Sunday.